Welcome to Players Only, your backstage pass behind the scenes of today's PC and video game industry. I'm Scott Steinberg, and this week we're taking a look at independent or indie game development, one of the industry's fastest growing trends. Join us as we find out why today's biggest ideas are often coming from the smallest, most unlikely sources. It's really an outstanding time for independent game development. We've seen uh, the GDC and the IG app really explode in recent years with platforms like Steam, Direct Drive, and GameTap. There's really more opportunities now to get a game out there than there have ever been. And with you know something of a decline in uh, major publisher releases on the PC over the last few years, Indies have an opportunity to move into that market that's not being served as well. I, I, I think indie games are incredibly important. The, the, the biggest innovation going on in our industry right now is within indie games. That's the spark of new ideas that are coming for a relatively low cost and low risk. People can try new things. And frankly, I'm, I'm astounded by the number of new Flash games and, and small PC downloadable games that have come out in the last five, ten years uh, from, companies, from companies and people who have never made games before in their life. It is really encouraging to see a game like Everyday Shooter. It was a game for the PlayStation Network. One guy made that game. One kid, he, you know, he did it all himself, it got published, people played it, that's awesome. I want to see more of that, and I think the digital distribution allows that to happen. I think indie gaming is important now because it's sort of where the independent film scene was 20 years ago. You get all these new ideas, you get all these new people, these young kids taking risks, and that the mainstream companies just won't touch. And you get new ideas, new types of gameplay, new types of everything, and that's where the indie scene comes in. They're willing to take the risks. Not the gambling type? Maybe you should learn to be. I think that game developers need to take risks when the doing the you know, Halo number 247 may look like a better business proposition. What you really want is to create a paradigm shift in which you are the center of the universe and everybody else is trying to keep up to you. The only way you get there is through an innovation. When games cost 20, 30 million dollars and up, uh, when, and when you have teams of 300 people, it's very hard to, to, to take real risks. But as I've said many, many times, I mean, we're just too young a medium and we don't know how to, how to, how to make meaning through gameplay yet. It's really important uh, as an industry and companies in this industry to take risks because if you're not taking risks and doing new things and doing innovative creative products then as an industry we're going to stagnate. There was a time when a first person shooter did absolutely nothing but run around pick up spawning stuff and, and shoot people but now first person shooters have everything from strategy elements to RPG elements all kinds of new stuff and as we explore these new kinds of techniques or you know, do uh, mashups of different kinds of game genres or mechanics, you know, we get more rich experiences than we've had in the past. Sure, that's all fine and dandy, but how to break in? There's so many different routes to break in today that really the, the sky's the limit. You have PC downloadable stuff, uh, you, you have uh, XBLA and PSN, which is, which is console downloadable. Uh, you have mobile games, which is still a, a decent way to break in. So there's just so many options. So if you want to be a game designer, here's the absolute number one piece of advice. Make games right now, starting today. Okay, so the first argument is, I can't make games. I don't have Maya on my computer. Okay, so how many polygons are in the board game risk? None. So make me games. Make board games. Start working on that design portfolio. So read some great books. I really enjoy... Um, Tracy Fullerton has a game design workshop. Check that out. Read Raph Koster's Theory of Fun. Make sure you get Understanding Comics, Scott McCloud. Know the masters. If you don't know who Danny Berry is, find out. Know who Sid Meier is, Shigeru Miyamoto. Um, come to conferences and network. That's really important. This is where you're going to meet those people and learn from the people who are speaking. Gamedev.net is a great resource. Game Master is a great resource. You can, you can find a lot of good white papers, a lot of good articles, uh, and that really... It, it's, I, I think it's, it's, it's much easier to make a game today than it was 10 years ago where none of these resources actually existed. I make adventure games, so I use an engine called Adventure Game Studio, which is totally free. And there's lots of freeware stuff out there um, that you can use. And a lot of them have licenses for commercial use. And at the very least, you can use them as a prototype. Or at least it'll get you started. And it'll get you thinking like a game developer. Before you make the switch to full-time development, though, you might want to heed the words of today's most successful game designers. 
The worst line that I can hear, and I think this is true for publishers, is I'm going to do a better version of X, whatever X is. It's far better to say, look, I'm doing this and no one else is doing it. Even though it is brave and even though it's difficult, that makes it a good reason to do it. Casual gaming is a great place to start. Mobile gaming, you know, handheld, and you know, every every step up is another increment in the size and complexity of your business. I mean, there's greater reward. You know, if you can make the, the you know one of the top ten console games in the year, the, the, the results are amazing. But you know, it, it takes years to get there. Really know who you are and what what you believe in and your values, but at the same time be willing to change because the industry around us is changing. We're we're really blessed to be part of the. First off, I, an industry I believe is an emerging art form, but also one that's based on both technology and entertainment, which are, when you think about the intersection of those two, that are very dynamic and probably the, it's probably the fastest growing, most dynamic industry in the world. One of my secrets has been just to, to speak my mind. It doesn't mean you get lots and lots of fans. Some people hate me because of it because they disagree with my opinions. But the fact is, that's what gets people calling you back saying, hey, can we get another opinion because they're going to get a real opinion. What I look for today is how do I build better things cheaper? Because I know that the more expensive it's going to be, the less impact I'm going to have over the control of its destiny. Because there's going to be all these more people involved that are going to be you know, giving their input and wanting to have changes and stuff like this. So where the most creative people, in my opinion, are going is they're looking for really cheap antidotes to deliver and bring to the audience cooler ideas. Sweet, so you've made a cool game and done it cost effectively. Now, how to get it to the masses? I think one of the most exciting things going on in the game business right now is how many ways there are to reach an audience. Uh, in the past, it was really hard to make uh, a small, crazy, innovative game and actually get it to people with any uh, hope of making any money off of it, which of course you need to do to make the next one. Uh, now, with uh, digital distribution, with uh, casual games exploding, with uh, even the consoles offering online distribution, um, I think we're seeing uh, an explosion of creativity. Before digital distribution was a, a meaningful format, we couldn't do things like episodic gameplay. We couldn't do things like digital or uh, like uh, microtransactions. Now that we do have digital distribution, and so many gamers, especially in the course segment, do have broadband access. We, the sky's the limit in terms of exploring new ways to monetize games. The new business models are going to open gaming up to very similar to business models that you'll see to uh, what you see on movies. So indie type gaming studios could actually have a much bigger opportunity to make more boutique games that end up uh, you know, appealing to a very uh, big audience maybe of a a type of game that we wouldn't be able to invest in at, at first. Episodic content I think is going to be huge um, and I'm very excited about that. I, I was speaking with the Rockstar guys a couple of weeks ago and um, <laughs> talking to them about the, the, the idea of using uh, the new Grand Theft Auto not only as a AAA title but as a platform to release new content so it could become sort of its own vehicle for creating, you know, for them to put games into the hands of gamers without having to invest millions and millions of dollars and um, having to then put it out on shelves, you know, come out with a new title, a new iteration. I'm one of the most impatient people you've ever met, and so what happens is a game comes out, I don't want to wait for it to be shipped to a store somewhere nearby and someone to take his little knife out and open up the box and finally get around to putting it on the shelf, and I show up at the store, and he says we're sold out. I hate that. So the idea of digital distribution, meaning the game was shipped at midnight and at 12.05, I'm already playing the game, that's, that's, that's really the future that I want, and anything that takes us in that direction more and more um, is a good thing. Steam is a, is a great example where Steam will download a game onto your machine before midnight, so they know midnight that it's going to get unlocked, so they'll download the game and then midnight they unlock it. That's just wonderful. And whenever the um, console networks do the same thing, it just, it's just going to basically kill my interest in ever going to a, a video game store again. Speaking of impatiently waiting, we'll see you next week on Players Only.